We regularly cover the countless gigantic ancient megaliths, which can fortunately still be found within the ruins of antiquity all over the world. Enigmatic, often inexplicable relics of a forgotten age that due to their controversial existence are either ignored by mainstream funded explorations, subsequently obscured, overlooked by the greater world, or simply attributed to a culture once incapable of such undertakings. Once one is presented with the facts regarding these building blocks, their weights, the precision of the original execution, and the many other characteristics which elude academic explanation, it is easy to see why an academic world who continue to refuse even the smallest consideration in regards to the possibility of a lost chapter of human history, this regardless of the fact that said artifacts are rather ironically all undeniable evidence for their existence. One cannot only discover the motivation behind such denials, but the many tactics used to dodge such areas of study. For not only do we regularly explore these incredible megalithic legacies, but they are all too often attributed to a more recent, permitted, and thus funded, subsequently well-studied periods of ancestry. And our next item of interest is of no exception. We have in the past covered a number of the astonishing ancient megaliths that can be found dotting ancient Egypt, the Colossus of Memnon, which apparently once sung at night each car from a single block of granite, and each weighing in at over 1,000 tons. We have exposed the enormous stones which form the Great Pyramid's inner skeletons, along with many others found across the plateau and beyond, all of which tell of a lost knowledge and capability, unquestionably indicative of advanced ancient civilization. Pompeii's Pillar, located within Alexandria, is truly one of the wonders of the ancient world. One of the largest monoliths on Earth, 20 meters in height, and with a diameter of nearly 3 meters at its base, this enormous column was once sourced and carved from one single block of Aswan Quarry's pink granite, and it is estimated to weigh an impressive 290 tons. Anyone within heavy goods, modern construction, will understand just how massive this pillar is, and indeed, just what an incredible feat it was for this ancient civilization to have once created such architecture. Pompeii's pillar is so big that to claim such accomplishments were made within the Roman era or before, when even modern man has great difficulty moving such weights, even the smallest of distances, we feel is preposterous. Like that of the obelisk of Axum, which was unfortunately toppled, giving the obelisk its modern title of the toppled obelisk. This monolith is estimated to have weighed far more, yet was once erected somehow by an ancient ancestor. However, we feel, although at some time within the past, a concerted effort to destroy this legacy was undertaken. The pillar's enormous base made toppling it impossible by a later, less capable culture. Muslim traveler Ibn Patuta visited Alexandria in 1326 AD, having shot an arrow tied to a string over the pillar, he successfully climbed over it. He was later followed in early 1803 by British commander John Shortland of HMS Pandur. After he flew a kite over the pillar, again successfully getting a rope over it, on February 2nd, he and John White, Pandur's master, climbed it. When they got to the top, they displayed a Union Jack, drank a toast to King George III, and gave three cheers. Four days later they would climb the pillar again, after fixing a weather vane, they ate a beefsteak and again toasted the king. Who built Pompey's pillar? How did they move and erect it? Is this pillar the only surviving remnant of a past, enormous ancient structure? Or merely a single standing column? And if so, why? Why create just one pillar? Pompey's pillar is undoubtedly an amazing relic, left to us from a bygone era, and as such, highly compelling. Within the grounds of an Islamic mosque in India stands an iron pillar. It has stood in the same position for hundreds of years, and it has never rusted. Additionally, no one knows where it came from, when it was made, or who made it. 
It has been called a testimony to the high level of skill achieved by ancient Indian iron smiths. The metal within the pillar has a particularly special characteristic. It possesses the ability to create a skin of anti-corrosive properties, from the exact same wetting drying cycle, which would usually encourage rust. The pillar weighs over 6 tons, measures 29 feet in height, and is argued to have originally been erected nearly 2,000 years ago, yet no real evidence of its construction or purpose exists. Additionally, no technique for creating such metals exists either. It bears a scar from a cannonball strike halfway up, but no one knows when this happened, some believe it may have happened during a past invasion, but it may have occurred at any time. Maybe someone was testing to see if it was unbreakable. It also has an inscription which was hammered onto it in the very distant past, so distant in fact, no one knows when it was made. It is a eulogy of a king named Chandra, who sounded like a very great man. It took a number of years from when the inscription began to be studied, to when it was translated, and although a few different translations exist, they are all very similar in wording. The inscription speaks of a conquering king, a king who led his people with courage. Who this King Chandra was and how long ago he reigned may remain unknown. Is this inconspicuous pillar standing in a quiet courtyard in India, an ancient alien artifact? Is it proof of advanced ancient civilization? It's surprising such artifacts don't get more attention. Along with the many other currently unexplained feats of engineering present within the ancient ruins of Baalbek's temples is undoubtedly the variety of ancient stones that were somehow incorporated into the structures. Although modern academia and indeed its supporters, who are all seemingly suffering with selective research syndrome, claim that Baalbek is a Roman ruin, we feel, as mentioned, the sheer size of the ancient megaliths that were installed masterfully into its construction are obviously far too large for our Roman ancestors to have transported from distant quarries and who have installed into the structure. We are more than open to this proposition that they were indeed installed and built by Romans, if we can be provided with one single logical explanation as to how this was done. But as of yet, this remains elusive, absent any academic explanation as to the site. As mentioned, the astonishing array of ancient stones is also an area that is rarely covered by individuals attempting to convey an air of all-knowing to the masses, as these features are, just like the enormous megaliths present at the site, currently unexplainable. Specifically, it's the pink granite columns. The reason for our focus on these particular stones is the fact that this pink granite is only available at one known ancient quarry, that being the famous quarry of Aswan, located within modern-day Egypt, an astonishing 1,500 kilometers away. Some of these stones, weighing in at more than 10 metric tons, this achievement, we feel, is clear indication of the fact that the builders of these ancient sites were far more capable than that of our more recent Roman ancestors. For example, as previously covered on our channel, Henri Layard brought two Lamassu weighing in at a similar size around 10 tons to London. This task took over 18 months of arduous suffering for hundreds of our modern ancestors placed a mere century ago to complete. It included several near disasters, and included loading them onto wheeled carts, complex systems of modern pulleys and levers operated by dozens of men, the utilization of over 300 men in total, a barge, and a custom-built ramp to haul them up the steps and into the museum. How these same curators, historians, and academics alike can continue to claim that our Roman ancestors completed such tasks, along with the placement of such enormous stone megaliths, is to us absurd. Was the unfinished obelisk found within Aswan the work of the same civilization? We feel that these pink granite columns could in all possibility be a link that connects these two ancient sites, and in particular, the Great Pyramids. Was Baalbek with its enormous granite megaliths, built by the same people as the Great Pyramids? Is the giant megalithic exoskeleton of the Great Pyramids, which we have already exposed, 
built with the same techniques as Baalbek. We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. <laughs>